Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you my daily rank rewards from one of my accounts. Plus, we open a Chaos Legion pack. While we're doing it, we're going to digest and deep dive into the contents that we open and receive. While we're doing it, you're going to see me recognize an opportunity that I think is new. I, I don't see it very often, and I see it a lot in the Death Splinter, but never in the way that we're going to describe here. It's It involves redemption, it involves weaken, and utilizing low mana matches to your advantage. So stick around, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Have an amazing day. God bless. Hey guys, Infidel1258 here today. I'm another deep dive on my daily rewards. This is 12 gold chests. So we'll look at the contents. We'll analyze the cards that we are able to achieve and receive. If we get some Chaos Legion packs, we'll open them and we'll analyze those cards. Just a full deep analysis of what these are worth from a price standpoint, but they're also their value, which is more complicated to understand and maybe even the future possible price appreciation. A little bit of DC, never bad. Oh, legendary. Here we go nice 70 cents probably like in terms of price today but of course this will one day be many dollars per bcx i feel so certain of that fact and you know maybe that's four years away but it is what it is like it's just it's irrelevant because i'm going to be here so long as the game is here and you know i think the game will be here unless there's some sort of black swan event that no one can anticipate it's just like something like this is a lock Legendary cards are too meaningful, they're too powerful, they're too important to winning. And this card in particular with the low mana and the the the, the attack type that synergizes perfectly with Obsidian from the green team. The camouflage is so amazing because it just hides back there. And uh and at the higher levels it gets void, which is nice because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily kill itself when it's firing. So this card. Uh Void at level two, so that's silver, meaning it's far less capable of killing itself. Uh, once you get that void, you're going to be doing three damage if you're running this with obsidian. And if it reflects back at you, that should be two. And then the void makes it one. And so, of course, you still can kill yourself, but that's kind of a unique. It's probably going to need, it's probably going to take a certain set of events, right? You need your opponent to have. A magic reflect monster which is possible certainly increasingly probable with some of the new chaos monsters um but this just gives you that little bit of reassurance so i love that uh, i love that combination this makes it resilient this makes it resilient this helps the team so much like i find in especially in low mana matches weekend is so powerful in low mana matches um when when your opponent uses like let's say two or three or four you have two options with the low mana match right you can go one big monster or you can probably do three or four small monsters and usually small monsters have low hit points and so weekend brings like a two hit point to a one and that is so significant because one one redemption um can really turn the tide so one of my favorite plays and you guys have seen it on the battlefield for sure where you see two or three different weekends and it's usually with the death team but you can do something similar with your with your uh, with your green team. I mean, there's a weekend here. There's the there's the Doctor Blight weekend. Um, that's two weekends that you can put on your green team, and there might be more. Let's find out. So right there, Swamp Thing. Another reason why Swamp Thing is an amazing card. I I don't have this anymore. I think I sold my old copy. But man, doing triple weekend is broken, and I do it with the Death Splinter all the time, and um, it just it just is amazing, and it wins. And the Swamp Thing gets that weekend at level one. So one BCX of this thing would be is adequate for that. So you're going to get that for two mana. You're going to get a weekend. You can get a four hit point meat shield. And the thing can be a like essentially who cares about the archery damage? I would argue that the weekend is the biggest thing that this is going to contribute. So I would say from a if you can get for five bucks, one BCX of this card and you do you triple weekend with the green team, assuming you have Dr. Blight, assuming you have uh, Jim Bilka at the gold level and you're playing in gold league that's a triple weekend for a very small amount of mana Th two for this three for that that's five four for blight that's nine you know three or four for your for your summoner so you could do and then if you can bring one redemption which i know there's okay so right there there's there's a redemption the spirit shaman again th this is a more expensive card you're talking look at that 160 bucks for the max level but this is a great card and that is a very reasonable price for a great card uh, the stun it's one of the rare stuns on the green team and divine shield makes it way tougher than you might think 
redemption right there so important you, and then also if you can bring out the neutral redemptions which there are there are some like the spell smith which i'll do i do all the time on my triple weekend play with the death splinter and if you have the halfling alchemist which again expensive but i have it um you need 11 copies right there uh, 400 bucks so probably out of most people's price range but it's this play works with the death splinter and it would work with the green splinter and i never see it happen with the green splinter but um Jin pilka would be part of that would that opportunity so interesting that that option is there and that i don't really see it happen very often but i definitely think it, it, it could work and would work so food for thought great card oh we'll get a pack there here we go let's see 56 dc we'll open a pack we'll see what we get vampiric blossom you know what vampiric blossom um i'm not a big fan let's go look at the detailed uh the detailed breakdown of vampire here it is so oppress is really actually pretty helpful in many contexts i'll tell you that because certainly there are rule sets where you know there's a strong likelihood that your, your tank is the opponent's tank is not going to attack that's going to be those rule sets where it's no melee um and and that's usually going to mean like a like a gelatinous cube or a lord a or a onyx sentinel goes in the first position because those are those are good tanks that don't have that melee and so they can slip in and be that 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 alternative but if you can guess that they're going to try that because of that rule set oppress becomes so much more powerful death blow i find is really really overrated this is one of my least favorite abilities because this monster does two times damage if their target is the only monster left on the team it's pretty it's rare that you can anticipate that that this will be helpful. So how do you how do you predict that an ability is going to be helpful? You need to you need to anticipate that your opponent is going to try a certain setup that would facilitate the utility of that ability. Apart from like a 16 mana match where you know you know your opponent has has Kron and they 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 use obsidian and then they're going to drop uh cron with obsidian and go last stand mode you know yeah vampire blossom with the death blow in that context would be would be really really helpful but even even so 2x damage on two times or sorry two damage or even 2x damage on three damage i mean that's not even that much damage that's like cron's gonna heal through that and so so it's like this is powerful in if you directly understand what your opponent is going to use and you can predict him into a corner and and really outmaneuver them mentally in that way but it's not even that powerful like even in that exact scenario where you're going to go up against lamacron uh or not lamacron lamacron this would not be good enough lamacron this would no way this would be good enough because lamacron is going to get like 20 hit points and heal like eight points a turn this is just not going to do enough damage, even at the highest level. Um, it helps. It you know it helps. I'm, but it it's such a guessing game whether your the death blow is going to become an effective tool, right? Like, how do you know that that's going to be that that's going to be you're going to you're going to end up coming down to your opponent's last monster? Only do, the only time you're going to know is in those low mana matches where you see in the last five hit games my opponent has Kron or has like a last stander and they're going for like one big play um and then death blow yeah is going to be helpful but i would argue it's not even that helpful like five mana six archery damage and the oppress is is great but you're not that's these two are not synergetic right like i mean how i guess if if you're going up against like llama cube this would be synergetic and then helpful but again that's so niche i mean yes death blow is going to make this more powerful in certain situations i would argue you cannot predict when this is going to be needed going before the match begins you can't say to me with 100 percent certainty death blow is going to really turn the tides in this move in this moment and give me the give me the victory before the match is 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 launched and so it's a guess and yeah, that means it can be helpful, but 
that's not the sort of ability I want to I want to build my attack strategy around. And therefore, I really don't like it. Oppress can be very powerful. Archery is a, 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 my least favorite attack. Death Blow is a real, you know, it's a coin toss. This archery damage is quite low. The hit points are pretty high, reasonably high. Immunity is helpful. Um, I think this card is really, really mediocre, really underwhelming. Pelicor Conjurer, I'm not going to comment on that again, but you know, I think it's excellent. We'll leave it at that. I think it's excellent. I think the, the cost is very, very low. I think the mana and for what you get out of that mana is so worth it. One legendary potion, no big deal. Another Pelicor Bandit, again, one of the best cards for the of the reward cards, and yet the price is not reflecting that at all. And common cards are going to be the ones that really benefit from the long-term price appreciation in many ways because of the, the fact that 400 copies are being burnt every time you, you create a diamond level, um, level max level copy. And so that's just going to bring that supply down and that's going to create that price appreciation due to supply demand crunch. A little more DEC, another potion, and a Murd Hamper. You guys know I don't like that one either. So pretty underwhelming. Uh, these three cards are, in my opinion, excellent. Uh, these two are really whatever. Some good DEC, all things considered, and a pack. So let's go ahead and open a pack. One rare, two rares. Let's see a gold foil summoner. Come on. So what do we got here? Chaos Knight, one of my new favorites, especially synergetically with the with the Grandmaster Wraith, the armor. This biggest weakness was definitely the low hit points, but the armor is going to help big time. It has the Inspire um, at the higher levels. I love this card. I use it a lot. In it's, I use it kind of as like a support tank. I put it in the back line as a defender. In even in matches where melee f is not capable of attacking from any position, that that is. That is that would be awesome and i love this card in that context especially but even if it's not melee from any position i will use this card as a sneak attack defender because of this shield and because of the armor and hit points um uh and because it has the inspire so i love this card my silic morphoid is one of those ones that is uh you know super important to have at the gold foil as a gold foil because again one man i just makes it so playable you're going to get a lot of utility out of and i and really enjoy those the 10 percent win bonuses on your uh on your your daily focus or your your focus points the crypt beetle i haven't seen this one in a while i mean i i like this card and i um i use it quite a bit you know it's got a lot of resiliency like um it's it's a really affordable It's a really affordable little tank. I mean, affordable from like a dollar standpoint, but also from a mana standpoint. And I mean, the shield just makes it, again, a great sneak attack defender. And then equalizer rule sets can be so annoying in that, at every level, really, in that that shield is going to really be, um, make it so much stronger when you start to add on hit points due to equalizer. And look at this at the highest level three attack and nine hit points this thing's really it's it's really really strong and yeah sure it's slow but there's rule sets for that that would be an advantage i like this card a lot i use it a fair a bit it's still it is niche um it's not excellent but it is good it's strong in the right context and it's a great card to have in your in your repertoire okay life sapper amazing anything with life leech or scavenge are so helpful in many many contexts whether it's noxious fumes whether it's earthquake whether it's equalizer uh, whether it's blast all of those life leech and, and blast great together life leech helps you stay alive longer during earthquake and noxious fumes um i just love i love the life sapper and again three mana so reasonable and also low mana matches like the little the little league matches I find magic is really helpful in those little league matches and therefore a life sapper is is really helpful in low mana like in the four in the little leagues but in many 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 contexts i love this card i think it's really exceptional actually i don't i, I wouldn't even say good i'd say this is an exceptional card um again price point totally in the dumps no um what's it called yeah let's look life leech there he is 
Redemption too. That's one of your redemption ones. I like to I do like a a double or a triple redemption play and a double or a triple um weaken play with my death team and it just it it slaps man it wins a lot it wins very commonly um yeah so great card worth worth every penny you need 100 copies 115 copies for max and you're talking what you know i think that's 20 cents each you add a zero I think it's only 50, 20 bucks. Is that right? It is, isn't it? <clears throat> one, one, five times point 0.21. Oops. Yeah, $24. Wow. For a really, what I would consider a really excellent, what I would consider a really excellent uh, rare card in many contexts. Keep going. And there's that spellsmith, and that's got one of those weekends, right? Didn't we say that? Spellsmith? L. Smith? Part of that exact play we were talking about earlier with the redemption. That's sorry. So, another uh, one of the redemption plays that can synergize so well with either t typically death, but like I just showed earlier, the green team also. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.